Hey, True Believers England team here. It's Friday night, time for our first appearance. Uh, what were we, first appearance Friday? Our bad comic theater, where we're going to be looking at a couple of uh, first appearances of the same character. And there's a little story here. This guy first shows up, Sergeant Rock first shows up, and he's literally known as The Rock. And as a matter of fact, I remember in the 2000s, a lot of people thought Dwayne Johnson should be playing him just because they're both called The Rock. And then he shows up in another story in Our Army at War, number 81, and he's not really named. He's just The Rock of Easy Company. He doesn't really become Sergeant Rock until issue number 83. So some people have argued which one is which as far as the first appearance is concerned. Although I do believe it's uh, number 81 that really took off in price. But uh, I figure, you know what? Let's just cover all bases because they're really only eight to ten page stories anyway. So why not? And uh, I, th I think it's going to be fun. Now, here to help me uh, read these, we have Eric Back Issue Breen. And we have the real Dr. Venkman behind that Garfield the Cat. What's going on? Substitutes. All right. Graphic Man is joining us again, and for the first time out on this particular show, we have the almighty Sergeant Jack. And if you have a decent mic and would like to join us for any of these, uh, feel free. Jump, jump on. Uh, it, it's fun. It's fun, and it's uh, silly and, and stupid and just entertaining as heck. So. We also accept trusty mics. So if you have a trusty mic and you want to join us because you're trusty, go ahead. Yeah, you said trust a lot. I don't I don't really know what you're talking about there. Okay, so I figure, you know what, let's jump right on into this. Uh, here we go. Now, I got to tell you something. You said once, Eric, that DC really has the, uh, has the handle on war comics and horror. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell you, some of the best covers of the Golden Age are war comics. And I love this one. That that's basically it. You got the title at the top, and just the featuring the rock. But what else do you need from a from a comic book cover than a big bazooka shooting at at a Nazi tank? I, I, asking for more would just be gravy. I, I think so. <laughs> I mean, it says USA on it. And we're blowing up Nazis. Yeah, it's 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 a lot of fun, man. I I just love this cover anyway. All righty, let me uh, let me get this uh, shared again. Nowadays, they wouldn't have USC on there at all because we're ashamed of our country mm -hmm. anymore. Uh, do you want to spend? Uh, stop spending money. All righty. So uh, <laughs> let, let, we'll go as if I okay if I remember correctly. Don't I have the uh, rock on this one? All righty, come on and fight. Come on a fight, we see as the rock is both soldier and boxer. I did I not think know there the... was some narration before that. No, it was literally this oh, periodical okay. may not be sold. Um, so yeah, here we go. They called him the human obstacle course. You had to beat him to be someone, but oh no... sorry. But no one ever made him stay down now. He was fighting in a different kind of ring. Would he still be The Rock? Dun, dun, dun. The Rock used to fight at the Main Street Arena. Oh, here's a guy we didn't go. Uh, Ving. Hey, stay away from the young silk head. He's left to uh, dynamite. Let him come to you. Hear me? I hear you. But when the bell rang, The Rock was out there slugging it out with the latest murderous contender for the crown. Of course, The Rock went down, but you couldn't keep him down. That's why they call him The Rock. Come on and fight. He's a wrecking machine, Rock. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Some men are great surgeons. Others are great hunters, painters. Others are great teachers. But The Rock wasn't a great fighter. He just wouldn't stay down. 
that's me. So yep. Six, seven, eight, nine. That was all he had. Something in him pushed him onto his feet again, no matter how hard he had been hit. Come on and fight. He know he lost. The rock always ended up on his feet. The winner on points, Young Silk. The rock stood in the way of every man who sought to challenge the champion. He was the human obstacle course. A human obstacle course that fighters had to pass through to prove they were eligible to meet the champ. But when it was over, the rock was on his feet. Come on and fight. Because that's all he ever knew. Come on and fight. Not to stay down. Come on and fight. About 202 pounds. <laughs> Once the rock went in as a sparring partner against the champ. He'll stay down when the champ hits him. No one ever gets up when they get hit like that. But the rock wasn't no one. He was someone very special. Someone who couldn't stay down. Come on and fight. No one could make the rock stay down in the ring. Come on and fight. But war is a different thing. War can shatter steel. What chance would a human rock have? The rock was in an advance outpost that had just come under enemy shell fire. Radio guy. Second base, call home plate. Come in, home plate, come in. Concussion must knock the walkie-talkie out of commission and the whole line's depending on us for news of the enemy. This barrage may be the signal for an enemy advance. I'm going to try to get through to our lines. And we see him running at what looks like a no-man zone, no-man land. No matter what happens, hold this place. If they get through you, if they knock you down and maybe you stay down, they'll split our line apart. Stay on your feet no matter what. They're walking shells in towards us. The enemy shells walked right over the outpost. And amidst the cordite fumes and the smoke from the explosions, only one figure started to grope to his feet until a rock stood swaying, a human rock. He tended to the wounded. Jack? Oh, this is me again? Yeah, Jack and then oh. uh, Graphite. Graphite. Okay. Save, save yourself, Jimmy. Leave us. The Rock had only one answer. He made it as if he hadn't seen a thing or heard a word from anyone. Come on. Come on and fight. The advance enemy patrol didn't expect to find anyone left in the shell hole, but the rock was there waiting for them. One of the enemy, startled, fell, but the other two closed in on the rock. A skillful jab, and the rock was disarmed. A one, two, and the rock was down, but the rock had one thought. I won't stay down. I won't stay down. Beating I won't. In him like a giant drum. I won't stay, dr stay a drum. I won't stay down. <laughs> the first enemy never knew what hit him. The second one did. But even a rock can get dented. You did enough. You couldn't lift a bullet with your hands. Look after yourself. But the rock spoke as if he hadn't seen a thing or heard a word. Come on and fight. Then, following behind the advance enemy patrol, 
the inevitable enemy tank. Clankity, clank, clank. <laughs> Incredulously, the wounded men watched the rock slowly, painfully, with useless arms, push a rocket into a bazooka. They stared, still unable to believe what they saw. They saw him drag the heavy bazooka after him. He shouldn't have been able to even to crawl, but the rock stood up. Come on and fight. The tank saw the lone figure and swung his machine guns at it like gloves of steel. Somehow the rock stood there, a single TNT punch in his fist. Come on and fight. Now the tank unleashed its heavy punch. The rock toppled as he had so often in the past. And then, because he knew only one thing, that he couldn't stay down, he rose. It seemed to take a million years for him to lift the bazooka to his shoulder and another million to fire. But it only took an instant for the rocket to burn itself in the tank's ammo. Bang! Men who couldn't rise rose to their feet. Men who couldn't lift a finger lifted rifles. Men who couldn't fight fought. All because of the rock who knew only one thing. He couldn't stay down. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the first appearance of The Rock. I kept thinking you're going to say, come on and get happy. Come on, get happy. <laughs> so, okay, so there you go. What do you think? Is that the first appearance of Sergeant Rock? What, what is your opinion? Uh, I, I was going to ask you, Eric, but you just took a big old swing. You good? Hey, yeah, it's uh, kind of hard to dispute that that's um, the first appearance since he was, you know, we heard the rock more often than oh my gosh yeah anybody that watched <laughs> raw in 1998 <laughs> you know? i know that they saw the rock a <laughs> lot in that one but uh yeah so what do you think uh graphic i think i've memorized the phrase come on and fight come on and fight <laughs> yeah i know i'm thinking it should be on a, a t-shirt or something with this with the uh rock silhouette it does have the brown ball it says yeah. yeah come on fight come on and fight <laughs> yeah because after a while, I guess that, that could be a decent catchphrase. Come on and fight. Uh, but there you go. I don't know. Uh, when does he confront Apollo Creed SLK? Uh, why is the <laughs> word rock repeated every six words, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, they really wanted to get that out there, didn't, didn't they? Uh, did the tank run over the rock, perhaps? Uh, yep. <laughs> I, like I, the, I like the general Immortus rock right there, lifting up the bazooka. Took him a million years. I got to do this. <laughs> Everybody with me, come on and fight. No, I can I can see that actually on a teach. Come on and fight with a with the soldier. Real life. Soul come him. on, you can say, come on and fight. Go kill yourself. We're done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, we're good. You got the bazooka. We're back. We're fine back here. <laughs> Joey brought donuts. We're fine. We don't. We don't need the fight. We're 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 actually happy here. Don't worry about us. <laughs> I did notice that he was wearing everlasting like trench. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Wow, this this trench is kind of muddy. Can His we box... find one that has less dirt in it? His boxing trunks, though, <laughs> in the beginning, oh, he was wearing everlast, which right. is a brand right on there. So, <laughs> so there was a little bit of you know, research okay. done. Okay, so we're going to go on to the, to fight. the next book that is said to be a first appearance of Sergeant Rockets. Uh, that was the first one was uh, GI Combat number 68. I, 68, thank you. The next one is our Army at War number 83. No, where that's we the third are, one. That is 81 is the next one. 81, yeah, that's right. Now you did it, Eric. You could, nope, you... I've got it. I got it. I got the right one. I just <laughs> wanted to make I sure. I broke it. I just wanted to make sure we're on the you right. You done, done, done wrong. 
But uh, this time around, this time around, Eric is going to be playing the rock here. I'll take the narration. Vank is going to be a Nazi general because he's got that. Um, it's the NRA cap, isn't it? That's what it is. I'm really that's it. That. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, that, that's because that's how all of us feel. And then the uh, Nazi soldiers are uh, are going to be playing the by by the Almighty Jack and uh, on number and two graphic. And uh, I guess uh, I'll I'll take Soldier One. And uh, there we go. All righty, let's uh, let's share this one out and see how it goes. Hopefully. It's every bit as, I'm sorry, what is the uh, last book was? <laughs> All righty. But once again, you, you can't change my mind. Uh, you know, these Golden Age war, co war covers are just so, freaking so that's, awesome. That's what the whole cover looks like. Mine was missing pretty good chunks of it. Oh, yeah? Still paid a ton, but... It... Yeah, you would have to these days, right? Well, that's, this is a long time now. Ago. So no. they didn't come out toys like Free Bazooka when you buy this book? Come on, Probably. I mean, you know, as kids, we were allowed to have guns. I had a BB gun at like age eight, and I fired my first rifle around age 10 or 11, I think. <clears throat> Killed yeah. my first person at 12. No, oh, not 12. I was a late bloomer. Um, now, you're a, you're a speculator. Uh, Jack, do you know what the uh, first appearance number 81 here is uh, going? Uh, not off the top of my head. I don't, I actually don't pay attention to war comics because mm -hmm. people actually don't care too much outside of like the very big appearances. Right, right. So it's, I, I kind of just, I kind of just like to read them. That is, <laughs> that is I actually mostly true. only collect. You're, you're right. I, There's I mostly no... only collect, uh, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I mostly only collect, uh, the Kubert covers, uh, of the war books because he has some of the best covers. Okay. You, you do bring up a good point that in war comics, there are no, um, there aren't a lot of iconic stories outside of a couple of them. But even like with Sergeant rock, what was it? A hell in a hard place between hell and a hard place. And that was its own graphic novel. Great graphic novel, but it was its own thing. All right, let's uh, let's get going here. Um, do, do, do. Here's the first of many stories of the fabulous fighting E company and of their rugged sergeant who faced the enemy officer called the Iron Captain in the rock of Easy Company. The Nazi captain was a big man. He towered over his big soldiers. Nadi the Mata! Shao Air Captain! From his eagle cap to his big boots, the captain was not like other men. He is a man of iron. An iron captain. Rain iron on enemy fire. Across no man's land, the thin line of Easy Company awaited the enemy attack. And we see people in the trenches. The shells poured down like iron thunder. Wham! Blam! When it was over... See, see, Sarge, if I'd have my gun set up, it, it would have been knocked out just like the others. We'd better get it set up. An enemy attack is sure to follow on the heels of that barrage. Hey, Almighty Jack, you want to take this one? Because I forgot how wordy it is with me doing narration. <laughs> yeah, Sarge, you've got, oh, wait, yeah, Sarge, you got still hands to handle a machine as if it was a toy. I got this way of working in a steel mill. You've got to be strong to work on hot steel all day long. At that instant, across no man's land, the Nazi captain swept one big hand down like an iron hammer. Fire! Boom! We see the mortars go off, and they explode around the no man's land. And then great iron lid clamped on easy company. Sarge, that noise doesn't bother you any more than if you were, you was a rock. It's no noisier than a steel mill. The iron lid clamped tighter and tighter, pressing the sky down on Easy Company. Mortars, hot as blazes, tearing down the whole line apart. No hotter than melting steel. Suddenly, 
Sergeant Rocky, the barrage, it, it stopped. The lid is off. But here comes the enemy to try to screw it on again. And we see the Nazis piling over the hill. The Nazi captain led his men like a great iron statue come to life. And he throws a grenade towards the soldiers. The grenade he threw exploded like an iron fist beside the machine gun. Blam! The iron captain and his men poured through the hole in the barbed wire. But then rising to meet the iron wave that swept towards them. The Sarge, standing like a rock. The iron wave reached the single man with a machine gun, swirled about him, and broke as we see Nazi soldiers running scared from the rock. It was silent and then across no man's land. That's you, Jack. Tank coming. How can you stop that with an MG, Sergeant Rock? It's metal, ain't it? And I'm used to handle. Oh, sorry, I'm not the rock on this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's metal, ain't it? I'm used to handling metal. The Iron Captain rode on the oncoming tank. Thank. Smash that Americana line. Fire. The ex steel worker crawled out of no man's land to meet the tank. I'll see how that tank will digest this TNT pancake. He ignored bullets, whipping the ground all around him. At the last possible instant, he rolled out of the way of the grinding tread. Give it to them. You did. Bling! We see behind him the tank exploding, but on his way back to his position. I'll take you back to first aid. You really must be made of rock. N not to have stopped one, Sergeant Rocky. The tank was stopped, but the Iron Man on it was not. And as Sergeant Rocky was about to leave for first aid. Rocky, that buzzard's going to toss a potato masher at us. Dump me. I still got a clip. The sergeant's bullet slammed in the potato masher, <coughs> slammed the potato masher back. And we see a bullet. Not hit the hand, but the uh, grenade itself. But the Iron Captain came on something. Looks like I got a previous engagement. The Iron Captain raised his weapon like a Sith to cut down the man who faced him, but it was knocked out of his hands. Rip. Iron Captain and Steel Worker fought as if no one else was in the war. And we see the two of them basically going through a slobber knocker. When the fight was over... Our Iron Captain beaten. We are too. How could our Captain be defeated? He was made of iron. Guess he met the Rock of East Company. Another exciting story of the legendary Easy Company where the fighting is anything but easy is also in this issue. More explosive <laughs> adventures like this legendary outfit. It's Rock-like Sergeant and its rugged GIs will be published in future issues of our army at war. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, now that felt like a first appearance. That, that to me, I, I, I got I, I feel like the, I feel like the first one was kind of like a one-off story mm -hmm. and, and it was contained and they didn't really have much about the guy outside of he never gave up. And, and this one's more of a, well, this is a character that we're going to develop. Right, yeah, this like this actually does seem like it's Sergeant Rock, even though they're calling him Rocky all throughout it. This feels that way. It's kind of reminds me, Graphic Man, of Ant Man. Have you ever read his first appearance? Yeah, yeah, it's like uh, the the Shrinking Man movie. That's right. It has nothing to do with superhero looks. It has nothing to do with anything like that. Yet they say, "Oh, okay, this is the same character." Yeah, come on in. He's Ant Man now. Um, that's kind of, that seems what they did with GI, uh, combat. I, I don't know. Um, that's my take on this one. Yeah. You can tell this is, it's felt like they're in the middle of a story and you just like, and they just focus on a rock, but you don't know what was before that unless you read the other book. Yeah, that's true. That's true. At least you got that. Uh, let's see. He was the rock before Stallone. Uh, the <laughs> beginning of the story made me start to think Stallone borrowed some story points for Rocky. <laughs> now I want Stallone as Sergeant Rock. Let's make it happen. 
Um, Rania's saying she's not the intended market for the stories, but she likes them. They're solid and remind me of a good John, John Wayne wartime movie. Uh, let's see. Is this comic made by this, uh, Vincent? This is a DC comic, as most of the good ones are. Yeah, just that the second one. The, the, I agree. The first one felt like that was just a character that was meant to be used one time mm -hmm. because that was kind of like, like it, it was kind of like his story was told. And that was it. And then someone, someone probably said, yeah, that's kind of a neat name. So let's just kind of re, re, retrofit it to this guy. And then, then I think it took off from there. But I, it didn't feel like they were the same two people. No, it really didn't. So, oh, go on ahead. I, I heard somebody about to say something. I was just going to say, um, well, yeah, it's easy Changing the names uh, or taking the names starting to rock it sounded cool because you had other you had actors like Rock Hudson and stuff like that. So it was already been used by manly men. I don't really know whether to know about Rock Hudson, but manly men like Rock Hudson. <laughs> At the time, though, people didn't know. <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> like John Wayne was was a good name, you know, but it's also the name of John. All right, so uh, I think Venkman said he wanted to take the Rock on the third one, and then we've got uh, Almighty Jack as the Wall. Um, Eric, you going to take over narration again? or Yep. Uh, and graphic, you got the rest of them written down. Is that what you're showing? Or? Uh, Soldier just, number one. Soldier number one. And we I have. I want Eric to be the Jim Ross. Yeah, I think uh, I think it, it'll just go <laughs> around. Good like God. That, so. It's Stone Cold's music. <laughs> Who was airplane pilot one and two? I forgot to write them down as I was reading them off. Uh, I'm the guy in the submarine. <laughs> The key roll. How do you, there how you do go. You, how do you oh no, to these are there's there's not I'll, a lot of key roles except for narrator and rock in this one. So uh, and yeah, I, I don't like know. read up. I, I am the, the wall keeper. and the man in the sub. That's all I remember. The wall and the man <laughs> in the sub. All righty, we'll figure something out. You guys seem to know more. Be than the I do and I'm, team. Thankfully, like thankfully, I'm I'm just the host, so I don't need to know much. <laughs> the host with the most. All righty, and we've been going over these covers, and once again, other than the fact that it looks like somebody read this book with a fork, <laughs> it uh, I got I, I just dig on them. It's probably laying on gravel, driveway. I I was kind of looking up to see what what the prices are, and this issue is actually worth more than yeah. the other one. It, it passed it. It wasn't when I bought eighty one, but something happened in the last. 10 to 15 it, years. I mean, and it's his, it's his third appearance, according to DC. Yeah. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not sure why his third appearance. Maybe there's less copies of it. Maybe it's, maybe it's because they're actually calling him the Rock uh, or Sergeant Rock in here. Maybe this is his first time name. We'll find out as we go through. But for some reason, number 83 is worth more than 81 or the GI Combat. So this isn't Amanda Waller. The wall. No, not that wall. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. So uh, it opens up. Theory. It opens up on a uh, splash page where we. It looks like Sergeant Rock is either tickling this guy, or he's trying to hold him up while the guy shoots down an airplane. The, the rock tickling. and the wall. <laughs> and th these. This is back before Kubert started doing the covers too. Wherever just, the fighting men go about their business, no matter where they are in the foxholes. Hear the latest about Easy Company? Who, Who hasn't? hasn't? Oh, okay, that's you. All right, I don't know. I guess it's in the <laughs> I don't air. know if it's rocking up. Hear the latest about the rock of no. Easy Company? You mean Sergeant Rock? On the sea. Hear the latest about Easy Company? Or under it. Hear the latest about Easy Company? You mean what happened when Sergeant Rock met? Yes. The stories about Easy Company kept fighting men warm on every front. Wonder why they call us Easy Company. Anybody? Yeah, nothing yeah. ever comes easy to us. 
and the one man in easy who was most talked about was its rock sergeant rock and i think that right there is, is why, why it's happened. worth most yep. yes <laughs> man he looks like the gipper yeah he That's looks like ronald reagan you're right <laughs> <laughs> come on chickens you can set after the war is over Easy Company was almost continuously on the line. Continually on the line. So a steady stream of replacements was needed to keep up to fighting strength. Take care of these pigeons, guys. Okay, oh. Rock. Oh, sorry. That's fine. Almighty. Is that me? Oh. Yep. Why'd you call the Sarge Rock? Because that's what he is. Because when the going gets so rugged that only a rock could stand, he stands. One day, a new replacement came into Easy Company, a big, tough vet who had been separated from his outfit. Oh, that was close. Not close enough to Nick Joe Wall. Everything about this new replacement spelled... V E T, and he was big, bigger than anyone in Easy, even Sergeant Rock. So that's the Rock. He don't look so tough. If the Rock heard, he didn't answer. Damn right. The enemy was tough. They advanced behind a tank to make it even tougher for Easy Company. This time we sweep the Americaner back. In, I can't do it. German accent. <laughs> this time we sweep the Americaner company back into the back. sea. Clankety clank clank. Easy's forward line peered over its slit trench. Can't lift your head up to get a look at what's coming without getting it shaved by that machine gun. We'll stay put until they come at us, then blast them. It was then that Joe Wall spoke. But what if the tank just squats over this hole, pinning us down, while the infantry behind it rolls pineapples down on us? If we stop the tank, the infantry will lose its rolling cover. Give me some rapid fire. I'm going out. Zing ziao. The men of Easy ignored the hail of fire coming at them and covered Joe Wall as he crawled toward the oncoming tank. Kabow, bow, rat a tat a tat a tat The new man coolly lay in the path of the oncoming tank and primed a few grenades. The enemy dog feet behind the tank can't fire at me without exposing themselves to my cover fire. So it's between the tank and me. The men of Easy watched the man who was tackling the tank out front. Look at him lay there with that tank coming on, as if nothing could move him. He's like a wall. <laughs> Under the tank's angle of fire, Joe Wall waited as the steel mass loomed over him. Here goes a double hot foot. Those characters in the back of the tank will be waiting for it to clear me. Clankety clank clank. So they can jump me. So I'll play dead. And as the tank ground on for toward easy, the enemy saw the prone figure on the ground. Clank, clankety clank. Look, our tank got the fool. Uh, anybody could take this. <laughs> Maybe not. He's we must <laughs> we must make sure. I, I'm not going to try a uh, German accent. Though, guys. Yeah, we must make sure. Yeah. It was at that moment that the grenades stuck inside the tank treads exploded. That I can do. And while the enemy was momentarily startled, Joe Wall seized the rifle muzzle and... Give me that fly swatter. And even while the men of Easy attacked the stalled tank and streamed towards the enemy infantry, their eyes were fixed upon a lone figure 
who stood immovable as a wall. It was Sergeant Rock, the Rock of Easy Company, who put the finishing touches to the enemy tank. Wagner. Scatter! Uh, wrong, wrong accent. <laughs> well, I don't know. I just saw Nazis up there blowing up the tank. But the, <laughs> but the men's eyes were upon the tough new replacement, who was a big man in every way. Did you see that Joe Wall? The enemy couldn't climb over him. Sergeant, Sergeant Rocks, the Come Rock of Easy, and this guy's the Wall. And the newly nicknamed the Wall of Easy glanced at the Rock of Easy. So that's the Rock, huh? He don't look so tough. But if the Rock of Easy company heard, he didn't answer. Then came the day when a flying fort made a forced landing in front of the ground held by Easy Company. The fort's in trouble. It needs help. As the men of Easy started forward, started <clears throat> forward to the battered plain. Mortar fire. The Rock of Easy Company waved the men back. Those cute characters on the other side. No, we're going to try to help the fort. So they're zeroing in on us. Get back. Get back. They might even spring a counterattack on us. Even while the men fell back, the rock ran on. It's still me? Yeah. I can't tell. Yeah. They're, they're not blessing the ship. Probably going to have a, a try capturing it themselves for the bomb site. Suddenly, the rock has come. Oh, I'm sorry. Realized that <laughs> despite the rain of mortar shells around him, he was not alone. Thought I told you to go back. What? Can't hear a thing with all these eggshells being tossed at us. Just as the two men reached the grounded fort, the pilot hailed them. Ship's fixed again, ready to go up. But we've no men left to man our guns, and we've still got an AI target to hit. Mister, I don't know about the Sarge here, but guns is my middle name. The Rock of Easy Company didn't say anything as he and the wall scrambled to their gun positions in the waist. You look a little small behind that 50 Sarge, but it's just my size. The enemy had sent out an armored car out to stop the fort, but the car ran into a wall of 50 slugs. You might as well grab yourself some shut-eye, Sarge. I'll take care of any targets. The Rock didn't say anything as he looked down a half hour later at the target. The pilot had told them they were going to attack at low level. A rocket launching platform. He didn't have to say anything to the wall as the enemy fighters bore in. Just shoo these chickens round to my side, Sarge. I'll take care of them. Suddenly, the wall was hit. Can't lift my arms to fire. Got to, got to, but I can't. And a fighter is coming this way. The rock didn't say anything as he sprang to the walls 50 and tracked the enemy fighter. The rock didn't say a word as he went from gun. Why can't I help? To gun. What kind of soldier am I? A shitty one. To gun. <laughs> <laughs> what could am I? And then, when the target had been hit and the last fighter was boring in for the kill, the rock didn't say anything as he helped the wall to his gun. He didn't say anything as he placed the wall into position behind his 50. You're helping me <clears throat> fire my gun? If the enemy fighter thought it had been an easy target, it didn't know what the men behind the target came from easy. 
where the fighting is never easy. We got it. We got it. But only because you didn't budge. Weeks later, when everyone knew what it, about what had happened, new replacements came up to Easy as usual. Why do they call him the Rock of Easy? Because a wall may fall, Buster, but not a rock. Dun, dun, dun. Remember to eat Tootsie Rolls, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, that, that has to be the, the whole thing about that book has to be the fact that they named them because obviously this is just a continuation of the uh, the one we read before. The Rock says. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Eric, did you ever hear of Jerry Douglas? Is a question from MK. Uh, it's, does that have to do with anything? Uh, he he uh, he was an actor. He died today. Oh, okay, dokie. Uh, more of an enemy ace guy myself, but these books are fantastic, says Sebastian. And let's let's get around to that because this is the first time I've read these. I've never read the first appearance of The Rock uh, or any of them. First one, I got to tell you, not a fan. But um, yeah, the second one and this one, that's that's a lot of fun. These are some decent comics. I think the art is freaking great. Uh, considering this is gold, oh, it, it is Joe Coubert. <laughs> considering considering this is golden age, and uh, you know, oh, were they golden age? I I, they had the ten cent stamp. Maybe they were. Well, yeah, well, um, in, yeah maybe they were in that ran era, up the, the beginning of sixty two. Yeah, so, so yeah, so we still have the ten cent. Well, did, was was going they, on there. did they have? Yeah. Did they have comic code stuff? Yeah, on them? Uh, uh, that's, yeah that, you know. that's that's really how you know. Yeah, they're. Yeah. Okay, so they're early they're silver age. Yeah, yeah, or, I don't think you're hurting my case. Or really. the very yeah, or the yeah. very last year of golden age. Um, because a lot of the art was still very simple. I mean, you did have your your Kuberts, you did have your uh, Jack Kirby's and such like that. But a lot of art at the time was still very simple, and that didn't. I, I did not get that from this. This well, it's, book. it's like I've said for, yeah, for years. It, the war, the science fiction, the romance. Those all had better art than the superhero books because mm -hmm. they, they went for a different audience. The superheroes were the, the other three genres I mentioned were aimed older than the superheroes. Yeah. And obviously with the war book here, it's I, I just think it was a lot of fun. It was a, a really well drawn and not poorly written book. Uh, a little repetitive with the, the rock thing. The first one, like I said, is not my favorite. How about you, Almighty Jack? Where do you stand on these? Yeah, I, I, the first one was kind of iffy because, uh, I mean, most of the dialogue was just the rock. The rock. <laughs> but uh, I, the other two uh, were pretty great. I mean, I was looking up a bit. It looks like Bob Haney wrote both of these. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that kind of is probably why it's pretty good because Bob Haney... Really? Yeah, Bob Haney was a pretty good writer. Oh, I'm, I'm a huge Haney fan, but you know, it, he didn't. I mean, he wasn't called Zany Haney for no reason, but certainly not in these stories. He was known as Zany Haney. Yeah, because he didn't care. I mean, I said <laughs> one okay. month he'd make Bruce Wayne a senator, the next uh -huh. month he'd give him a kid, next month he was flying to Meepzor. They're you know, all imaginary didn't... stories. <laughs> what are you talking about? They're just <laughs> characters. Uh, so, okay, Graphic Man, we visit the Golden Age. This is where you live. Uh, or, this, and even the, the early Silver Age. So what, what, what do you think about these books? Well, I have to confess, I'm more Sergeant Fury um, than Sergeant Rock. You're fired. I know. I know. <laughs> but this, this last story is, I think, the best of all three. Mm-hmm. And I, I would I would rank them uh, the number two story was the worst because it was just Sarge. It was just him. Oh, I'm going to hold the guns and I I can still shoot. I was working in the steel factory and um, I think this one's better and this one might be worth more because I think it's probably the first mention of Easy Company and it seemed like a whole group even though it's you know the two guys Wall and the Rock. Where Sergeant Fury and his Howling Commandos, you felt like more of a group, and that's what I appreciate. The second story is just Sarge winning the war single-handedly, it seemed. But this yeah, one was he, great. 
and the art was fabulous in this third one. You know what this kind of reminded me of? Like a, a, a television show that has three pilots, and the third one really clicks. Yeah. And that's the one the network buys, and it lasts for you know a gun smoke amount of seasons. I mean, it is it is always like uh, where the new guy comes in, people like him, and then he goes like, "Oh, that's that's the main guy. Ah, I'm better than him." Till the very end, he finds out why that guy is so great, and he at the yeah. end he has a moral, you know, you know, awakening and realize, "Oh crap, I'm not jerked all the time." This guy could have done anything he wanted to do, but he ran out of respect for me. Held back, you know, help me out. Now. Um you brought up Sergeant Fury, and I'm thinking that would be a great comic for next week. Uh, the Sergeant Fury and his Howling Commandos number one, which I do believe is uh, Sergeant Fury's very uh, first appearance. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking since they're both half stories, uh, we could do the first appearance of Sergeant Fury. And then the first appearance of Nick Fury as Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, it might uh, uh, might might be a good uh, a good time to be fun. juxtapose yeah. the two different furies. So He's there you go. GI Joe, uh, take some comments, and I will be right back here. <coughs> Eric, uh, did you see that? I guess it's for all of us panelists. Uh, comparing the commandos. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm not sure I know what commando comics what that is. I remember um, Blake Commandos. Yeah, like, but I, I don't, you know. What, who, sure. who made the comment? I can't Robert, find it. Roberts. Ro Roberts is, um, okay. how would you compare Commando comics with Sergeant Rock? Do you think they influenced each other? So I'm guessing it would have been contemporaries, but I, I don't. I just started really getting into war comics recently. So I, um, I'm, yeah, I said, I, there's a lot of war series from the 50s that I'm just not familiar with. Right. This is my, this is my first work on it. So there, you know, I, I, I'm pretty sure it's the first time I've read these stories. Because I don't, I don't know that... Uh, I know there's a Sergeant Rock archives, but right. at the time I wasn't willing to pay 50 bucks for it, and now I wish I kind of had. Alrighty. Yeah, I don't think I've, I've heard of Commando Comics. I mean, I'm looking it up. It looks like it was made by Bell in the 40s. Okay. Oh, the oh, Commando Comics? Oh, that's yeah. when Eric, Eric was in his teens back yeah. then. Yeah, I was looking up War <laughs> Comics because I said I was going to have some for the auction this week as a, uh, you know, a little, it's Veterans Day. Let's throw some War Comics. And at the end of all of these, I usually show off some of the big dogs. <laughs> Not all of these are big dogs, but uh, they're, these are going to be some of the books that we're going to see um, tomorrow. So if you guys want to jump in and uh, check out the auction by all means please do trusty says we need a first appearance of the red skull so we can hear more bad german accents oh i'm pretty sure we're gonna get there um i found a <laughs> creature commandos number 105 where uh you know frankie holding up the nazi uh, symbol beating them with it i thought was awesome dude i thought um, that's hitler at first that's supposed to be shadowing on his face the 200th issue of GI combat, and this has a story with the rock and the losers, and what looks to be the haunted tank. So, all righty, from uh Simon and Kirby, we got Boy Commandos number one. Just because we have, uh, just because we're doing Sergeant Rock, and I thought, you know what? What would be a really cool Sergeant Rock comic would be Brave and the Bold. This is early Neil Adams. That's nice. This that is, is one of the big dogs. Ooh. And because I figured, what the heck, if we're going to have uh, some veterans as far as comics concerned, we want some war stories, why not get a DC Comics 100-page super spectacular that has... Uh, the Haunted Tank, Sergeant Rock, Johnny Cloud, Captain Storm. So, uh, and that's one of the big dogs as well. So, there you go. Check it out. I've got a lot of other stuff tomorrow, a lot of other uh, big dogs. It's going to be awesome. I'm very much looking forward to this uh, tomorrow. See how it goes. A little nervous, 
but uh, you know, I always do get that way. <coughs> um, what do you think? I uh, because I'm, I'm like way off on this one. I, I guess that's, that's glorious. This is like one of the greatest comic book covers of all time, in my opinion. And just to, it's, well, it's such a great freaking. And, and I could movie. argue that's not in the top five of the Adams covers in that like nine issue thing. That's how good they all were. Yeah, yeah. they're they're I mean, all. I, yeah, I mean, I agree with you, but I'm saying you can make a case because they've mm -hmm. got the. But Bork can hurt you, and Helgramite is his name. I mean, those are some great ones. Well, the thing about saying something is uh, Vegas of all time. There are hundreds of thousands of comic book covers so even the top 10 percent you know uh is a hell of a lot of books so it it is sort of a uh, uh it is a toss away line to say something along the like like that but um oh and uh let's see i did go to ollie's and i wanted to show this off because i was amazed that i was able to find this at my local Ollie's. Wow. It's the, uh, it's the defenders omnibus volume one. And it's, I am so happy. I, I I'm very happy. I was able to find this. This is not <coughs> going to be in the auction tomorrow. Oh, well, the current uh, defenders book, did, right? Did you say not? <laughs> <laughs> it will not be. No. So you actually going to take the time to read it. I am. I am. And then H I will... have you read those before? I have some of them i've read some of this but not all of this so, but i uh, I'm, i can't wait to tell jerry that you got that at ollie's because he actually spent three figures on it and thirty dollars yes that's considerably less than three figures yes it is <laughs> and, and, and as i said it prompted me to go to my ollie's to realize that yes they still suck your sucks so i went back to ollie's today and um there was another omnibus and I was like, Oh, there's an omnibus. It's Iron Man. Holy sh I got an Iron Man om omnibus here. So I, I rush up cause I'm like, there's a hallway of books and like at the end, like a Holy grail or a, uh, like a little temple, uh, a Buddhist temple where you go up and you light your candles and such is the graphic novel section at this Ollie's. So I'm seeing this Iron Man omnibus sitting up there. I'm like, yes. Oh, I got another omnibus. Oh, I'm so excited. Fucking Dan Slot, are you freaking kidding me? That's the <laughs> Iron Man omnibus you're going to put out here. Like, decades and decades of Iron Man. And you yep. put in Dan Slot that weeble wobble that actually does fall down. Mother is Dan Slot. I was gonna say, either it's gonna be that or someone's at the last minute you're gonna see someone grab and take it. That's the comic book gods just yeah. showing that they, it all they evens give, out. They give and they take away. That's... Boy, they take away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, one of the versions of that, the, I mean, the, the other cover, the like uh, B cover is Marvel feature number one. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, yeah, this says. Uh... It's got Doctor Strange 183, Submariner number uh, 22, 34 through 35, and 35. Yeah. The Incredible Hulk 126, Marvel uh, feature 1 through 3, Defenders 1 through 19, Giant Size Defenders 1 and 2, The Avengers 116 and through 118, Good. and uh, some material from Avengers 115. Yeah. So, well, so when those, when those come exciting. out, they would do the covers like the, there's Spider Man Omnibus. And Jerry and I both ordered them. When we ordered the Morbius, the, the, the cover of that was 101. Mm -hmm. And they told us that we both could, they can only do one per order. So I said, oh, I don't give a crap. You take that one. I'll take the J. Scott Campbell one, which a year later was worth cover price. The Morbius one was worth $400. Wow. Which proves that it doesn't matter if it's individual issues, omnibuses, trade paperbacks. If there's a way for me to make a wrong decision on something being worth something, uh -huh. I will make it. You will make it, yeah. Yes, I will. Well, you know, at least at least you know you know yourself and your limitations. I am, I, so what you did is you went over by Jerry and you trade the book for his copy. <laughs> no, but you know, because my logic was when it's sitting on the shelf, well, who cares what the cover is? I mean, mm -hmm. all you're going to see is the spine anyway. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I, I, I know you're a reader, right? 
it still would be nice to just get one of those right. Well, yeah, you still have that, onto one. You still have that way of looking at things. You can <coughs> we, we could talk about um, speculation and all that kind of stuff. Are you for it? Are you against it? Well, but you're always going to have that kind of feel towards. Things, I'm sure you if know? you ask Eric, if you ask Graphic nicely, he'll print you out a cover for your book. <laughs> I, I, I want him to print out some, uh, you know, box things like he's got on his. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like the LK says you just put a flaming bag of dog mess on around your Vulcan's front porch. I, uh, you know what? If it was if it was good because there were three of them, I was actually thinking, okay, I because I, I saw that they had multiple. I was gonna, okay, I got to get one for me and one for Moran. No, 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 not hey. will not buy Dan slot books. Could you um full screen graphic for a second? Certainly. Oh, so, so show off a couple of those uh his 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 new toys. Oh uh, yeah, see them. By all means, please do. Uh put that is sweet. He likes uh Disney, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm I'm here in Florida. I love Disney stuff. I love Disney comics. Ooh, don't. Two of my favorite videos. I did the first appearances of. Uh, oh my gosh, I'm. That is hot. Wow. That's that Those is sweet. Are great. Speaking of Disney, quick uh, e go to Walmart. Get your uh, your, your uh, popcorn tin as a Disney one. Oh uh, yeah. Old school Disney. There's Donald Duck, Mickey, Goofy, and all them on there. Wow. Anyway. Now, why don't we get to see the North by Northwest one uh, with uh, Eric Green running away from the plane? <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I don't have that loaded. Sorry. Oh, you gotta, darn. You got to put that on a box. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Do you see you put on a t-shirt, I'll pay you $40. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I'm uh, God, that is both companies do that. And I and I think I know why they do it. I, I, I know it sounds tinfoil hat, but I think they it bothers them that those sell in the bullshit that they're pumping out now doesn't. So they do that to stick it to people like us. And well, we'll give it to you, but it ain't gonna look good on your shelf. So um, as far as this Sunday, I know that uh, Nerdy Texan and Spider-Man have both said they wanted to play. Uh, if anybody from the comment section, if anybody watching this wants to play Jeopardy, just get a hold of me at England Teen on Twitter, englandteen at gmail.com, or just in one of the Jeopardy uh, videos, put a comment, which I ask everybody, go comment, just say hello. Please, it helps the algorithm. I wanted to get the numbers up on Jeopardy at least. Um, and these actually, because these do not do well. So <laughs> did Bendis ever get an omnibus? No, he's a wordy son of a bitch. Let's see. Um I'm no. sure he uh, has. five issues are omnibus. DuckTales, the 80s and the 90s show was great. <laughs> Haven't seen the reboot. The reboot is awesome. I'm a fan. Like I said, I like Disney stuff. I've I was raised Disney, in all honesty. Yeah. What with living right next door to it, so um, in a Darkwing Duck a reboot. I did um, uh, first appearance of Magica Dispel oh. and Gizmo oh. Duck over on Old Man Comics. Check those out. I am very happy to do the first comic book appearances of any Disney character as well as uh, any other comic book character. I think uh, I think they're just a hell of a lot of fun. So, uh, yeah, I, I dig on those. Uh, let's see. Slot must have contractually deal to get an omnibus. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not necessary, Marania. Um, I'll I'll host the next Jeopardy. I'll let somebody actually win a game. Oh my gosh, last week was a slaughter. It really well, because hard. you pick Pixel out so you could win. She said. Yeah, I think uh, I think he was trying to. He, he was trying to pummel me, I think. I, I feel like it was a setup from the yeah. beginning. That was it. That was it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Marania said the questions were going to be difficult. So Professor Pixel doesn't know a lot about comics. So I figured I would jump in 
you know, he would, she mentioned it was Eric Breen level, you know, meaning, okay, it's all going to be about sports. It's going to be sports comics. Um, so I jumped in. It was like, uh, and, and I, I tore them up. So. I don't know if those are dickhead Jack or just <laughs> what? I have a Jack level board and a green level for the next time, says Marania. Yikes. Damn. She just slapped you in the freaking nuts. Uh, didn't hit you. Slapped you in the nuts. Yeah, that's a center block uh, toss. I, I knew, I knew, hey, no, I knew most of. That, that first board and, and some of the second board, I, I knew nothing about Wonder Woman. I don't read her, her books. So there's some I didn't know anything about, but like, you know, it just, you guys are too quick. <laughs> it's just like, oh, it's... Wow. LK saying, tried the new DuckTales, can see why people liked it, but couldn't get past the voices. I feel the same way about the Muppets. I want to like the Muppets. I know if I work my, my way through it, it'll be fine, but Kermit just sounds wrong. It just doesn't sound right. That I don't know. I know it's just me, but uh, there you go. So what's the news on Big Bird? Is he going to become Thanksgiving dinner? I heard he got the shot. Yeah. So it just means he's going to get Delta and die. <laughs> uh, let's see. Gummy Bears, Tailspin, DuckTales. Do, 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 do. Spin it. Do, 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 I, I think it's yeah. funny. Nobody ever talks about the the, the really, really un, unspoken show. It's called Gummy Bears. The nineties oh. went for like a season. Yeah, <laughs> I heard. I, I know some people live and die by it. They say it's awesome. Um, the <laughs> the Disney afternoon. <laughs> the Disney afternoon is kind of the monkey and the wrench of me uh, saying that I was too old for He Man and uh, and the Transformers because it. At that point, I was watching DuckTales and I was watching Tailspin and all that kind of <laughs> stuff. But I ignored the hell out of He-Man and, and Transformers. It's funny. I like Tailspin, but I don't like Jungle Book. Oh, I love Jungle Book. But it's like pretty much the Jungle same characters. Jungle Book was my favorite Disney movie for a long time. Uh, let's see. As a matter of fact, we went out to, uh, me and my nieces, when they were here, we went out to the Disney Village, the shopping center there. And they have this guy, they, they got musicians all over the place. And this guy's got a violin. And uh, he stops and he's, I ask him a couple of questions. Me and Gail were walking through. We were like having a debate on what song he was playing. And uh, he goes, do you have any requests? And I ask for, um, I want to be like you. Ooh, 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 ooh I want to be like you. And uh, so he started playing that. And I, you guys know I sing along oh, with no. stuff. So he's playing it. My nieces are here, and I'm just belting it, man. I'm just, yeah. It was good. Thank you very much. I did you, well. You should cosplay as blue. <laughs> Get the costume and everything. Yeah. I'll just paint myself blue. I'm already hairy and bald. So yeah, there we go. All right. Uh, hairy and bald. Uh, that is that is such a, uh, anyway. We play trivia every week at a local coffee shop. The host is a comic book fan, so he usually likes to sneak a couple of comic book-based questions. And every Sunday on this channel at 9 p.m. Eastern, we have Comic Book Jeopardy. We are trying to get Eric and Graphic Man and uh, Gratu on. Since you guys seem to know a lot about at least the silver and golden age, I can finally ask some questions uh, along those lines. Also, uh, MK... They, uh uh captain planet reboot would not happen because he's killed by climate change oh yeah and i did a first appearance of Cla captain planet over <laughs> on old man comics as well that comic sucked holy toledo it sucked <laughs> i don't get it gang i know you late 80s <laughs> early 90s kids are big on the freaking captain planet i don't get it i just don't sorry it sucked not very good at all. With creatures like like creatures Scrabble nuts? You mean Fraggle Rock? Hey, I like Fraggle Rock. No, no, he's asking, he's asking Muppet like creatures. Oh, Scrabble. okay. What was the other show with Muppets like creatures Scrabble nuts or something? What? I'm thinking that's Fraggle Rock. He's thinking of he got scra he got <laughs> Scrabble nuts from Fraggle Rock. I don't, I don't know. Okay. Well, that's where Boomer came from, right? The turn I Boomer. Guess. Boomer. Uh, okay, gang. Crapped and planet. Yes, Glenzer. It, it sucked. 
All right, gang, next week we're going to be doing Sergeant Fury and his Howling Commandos and Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. So please join us 9 p.m. Eastern for that. Tomorrow night at 9 uh, is the auction, and uh, Sunday is our Jeopardy. Monday we just – that's our open mic. We talk about whatever uh, subjects are on our minds, and uh, there you go. So please join us for that. Don't forget to go on over to, to – uh, what, what are you guys calling it? Geeky Puppet Theater? Uh, well, right now we're not doing much on it all, but um, check on Wednesdays though. For mm -hmm. for uh, I'll have Flash is supposed to be coming out this week, and then over on Thursday we'll be doing Batwoman. Oh yeah, and, uh, tomorrow while we are doing the auction, we actually have live. We actually do a, a a live chat where we bring up topics and such. And while you were wasting your time on Supergirl, I watched the finale to Doom Patrol. So we'll have to do our review. You know what's funny, though? Well. I watched mm -hmm. Supergirl in 30 minutes. It was two-hour episodes. 2.20 speed. So <laughs> <laughs> a lot of fast-forwarding there, man. Did, did, you just, did, you just, did you just watch the straight content? <laughs> you know, when you watch it playback at 2.20, they speak normal. Because I, I swear, <laughs> Bernalani just slows down the dialogue so dang slow. He's like, I got to get five minutes of dialogue into a 45-minute episode. All righty. So also tomorrow uh, on Old Man Comics, I'm going to have uh, comic book origins of Gravedigger, a soldier from Men of War. So please check that out as well. And as always, uh, go on over to Ko-Fi if you don't mind helping the channel out. Drop a dollar in the tip jar. And I'd like to thank everybody who's already done that to everyone, all of the true believers. Thank you very, very much for watching. You kids have a good night. Good night.